What's up, people? My name is Ali Kolego Teo Tequila. Welcome to Zikoko, my favorite place. And they couldn't go the Photoshop king. <laughs> what an era. Uh, first of all, I need to say I'm still the king. I, feel like I, I left the scene and I see these kids do some things and I'm like, yeah, you can't catch up. <laughs> but yeah, um, that was a fun era. It was, uh, I think it, was, it started 20, um, 11, 12, 12, 13 actually, yeah. Um, I just started working with Jumia. I was the editor. You know, I was editing um, everything that went on the website, you know, and I was quite bored. I was looking for a moment. I was trying to get people's attention to, to um, my music. And um, of course, I didn't have money for marketing. I wasn't signed. I didn't know anybody. But because I'm also a marketing genius, I thought about it. How else can I, like, bring people to my side, you know? Then I can now serve them the music. So the first, my first attempt was um, Tiwa Savage's picture. I used to say something one time, if you leave space in your picture, I'll find my way there. So never leave space in your picture. <laughs> but yeah, I did Tiwa Savage's one. I, um, he um, went viral, people noticed, and it was funny. Then I went on to doing another one with Tools, Bami, then Kim Kardashian, Nicki Minaj, Drake, Chris Tijin, oh yeah, a lot of them. Yeah, you can find them on the internet. And the purpose was simple. It was get people's attention. I made it so funny as well, so that you would um, laugh and then I, and that got me a job. It got me the job um, with YBNL. I, I started designing for YBNL. That's when um, Lamide commissioned me to design the YBNL logo. I designed that, I designed covers for Leo Kesh and Victor, then I did some design. I think I, I may have done some designs for um, Don Jazzy as well, you know. And mind you, all this time I was designing industry night flyers. I designed for One Mike Niger as well, designed One Mike Niger's logo, you know. So I was in my graphics era. I've always been, I still am, but yeah, that time this was my uh, gig alongside working at Jumia and then going to Conga. But King of Photoshop era was, um, I think, is the it was probably the most, like one of the most genius ideas like till date. You know, I did that. I, I gathered enough like um, people on my side. A lot of um, OAPs, media people in the media became my friends. So it was easy to now say, "Yo, I have music," and then I sent to them. And when I released Shadi, people were like, "Wait, wait, wait! <laughs> he can sing." I'm like, "These people don't even know." So I feel like a lot of people didn't kind of take me seriously at first, you know, because I released cover before. I released a um, cover of um, Diamonds by Rihanna, you know. Um, that was beautiful. That was one of my best covers, actually. You can find it. But people didn't pay me that much attention. I just knew that Shade was going to work. Then I released Shade. Um, Olamide, which was my, uh, like, was paying me to design stuff for him then. Even like listen to like oh yo this guy sings as well and then I got signed and the minute I got signed and she did blow up and then I stopped I'm like yeah um, she I, I, yeah I like to call him she Michael <laughs> Michael is um, my best friend we've been friends for 23 years now uh, I met him when we moved to because I used we used to live as a family we used to live in Ifako Ijae. Then we moved to Ikotsu, and it was the only person, it was the first person I met, and then we became friends. Like, he was more the producer. He's always been the producer guy. I was always the writer. So he would produce, he would play some, he would play keys in the hour right. And we had, we had, I think we had three names. So at first it was another Roots of JC, which is funny as heck. Then there was Heaven Ward, and then there was, then there was the bridge. The bridge was the last one. Um, we were, he, um, Michael groomed me. Like it was, it was a huge part of my um, art history as well, because when I went for uh, MTN Project Fame and Big Talent Show, like I remember days before the uh, audition, I would play, I would sing like, you know, constantly practicing and all. And 
in 2013, I knew 2013-14, I knew that the band wasn't working. Like nobody was paying attention to any band. Like except of course you were you were going to be uh, bigger than V Square, and that was hard that time. So we just had a conversation like, how about I just do this thing solo? Like let me you have I'm, I have the knack for it more than you. You I think focus on production. That's what we did. He focused on production, then I took forefront and. Till now, that's what's happening. He's my music director. All of my shows, all the, all the magic that you see me do on stage, that's the guy behind it. And he produces my songs as well. He produced produce Ire, produced My Life, produced Sabina, and uh, look what you made me do, my new album, you know? So, yeah, but quitting the quitting the band was, we both of us realized that it was the best decision we ever made. My first album, my first, my first baby, Gold. Um, that album is so special to me because all my albums have been like where I am, like mentally, you know. And Gold was, I was, um, it was, I was in my um, urban high life era, you know, and I wanted to do just that. So I'm grateful for that album because it's the reason that I'm here today. You know, I released Gold 2016, and I mean, you name the hits, there are a lot of hits on that album. There's no skip and it's a, it's a huge blessing and chatting on the billboard was uh was a test or was a testimony as well like it was um it was it was such a good feeling when i saw it i remember seeing it and i'm like damn boy from the cotton made it to the billboard you know it was a great feeling and i'm i feel very very grateful and then to ibn as well like for the opportunity to put out such amazing album i have like uh, bittersweet experiences with about 30. The day I released Gold, I said to myself that the next one was going to be an upgrade. It was going to be um, a fusion of urban high life and a bit of pop. And that's why I wrote songs like Call On Me. I took a giant step that to many people was stupid. I lost, I lost teammates just because I released Call on me. They didn't understand it. Like, yo, you're doing so well with this high life thing. Why would you want to change it? If it's not broken, why are you fixing it? I'm like, um, that's not how I see it. I see it as um, being Pablo Picasso. Nobody tells him what to do in the studio. He just goes to the studio or wherever he paints. Then he paints his emotion. And that's what I did. I knew I was taking a huge risk, but I wanted to do it anyway. So I knew it was time for me to, to transition to do something else. Um, so I released Call On Me. It didn't at first hit people, you know, the way um, you would expect. It got a lot of backlash. I got a lot of backlash, like, ah, uh, what is this trying to do, you know? What, what was I trying to do? But somebody sent me a video of the song being played in Barcelona at the festival. And I just took that as my sign to never stop. You know, so I went on and I wrote Ire, which is, an absolute soundtrack of my life. Wrote um, Fame, another pop record. I wrote Surrender, you know, and when I released the album, people didn't find out the album for themselves. They didn't experience it for themselves. They listened to some stupid pundits, pundits back then. And then the news was that um, it sounded, I was sounding the same. I'm like, there's no way this album sounds the same. It's different, you know? And I have to admit that it kind of shaken my confidence a little bit that year. And, but I knew that people were going to get it, you know. But guess what happened? People discovered the album for themselves. And now a lot of people rated the album way more than gold. Till now people ask me, can I make an album like about 30 again? And I'm like, but this, this, is, this, this wasn't the impression that you guys gave me, you know. It got to me at first, but then I shook it off and I'm like, you know, I know the journey. I know what I was going to do. About, about 30 is a, very, is a very special album to me. It will forever remain like one of my favorite uh, works of all time. It was um, a summary of my life in 30 years. That's why it's called About 30. And I'm grateful for the songs that I made on the album. Yeah, that was some good money. I remember it was good. A huge um, shout to Unity Bank. It was. It was a beautiful partnership. Um, yeah, I'm grateful for the opportunity to, you know, to be the face of the bank. Yeah, it was a beautiful partnership. And I think we, we ran it twice as, as well, and we ended well. 
AG Baby entered the chat at that time, you know, I became more confident, you know, I haven't gone through um, the, the, the glitch that About30 um, had, I became a lot more confident. I have to say that the 2020 run, 2019-2020 run, um, I have to give it to um, Cess. Cess and I got in the studio, we became friends and then he would tell me, yo, I think you can do something else. I think you can. I'm like, I knew I, I knew already that I was going to do something else anyways. Because the song Hair For Ya that's on Afropop, I wrote that song since 2017. I wrote it for Diplo, he wanted to release it. But something happened, he didn't, he didn't release it anymore. Then I asked him like, yo, I'm going to keep the song for myself. So see how the journey started. I wrote Hair For Ya, it's a pop record, you should check it out. I wrote it since 2017. So the journey, the 2020 journey started like since 2017, even before I released about 30. All of my projects, everything that I that I've released is, is, is pre-planned, like it's intentional. So I knew that I, my next album after about 30 was going to be pop. So I started already. Then I met Sess. Uh, we made Before You Wake Up, Absolute Banger. Then we made my favorite, should I call it? Yeah, my favorite, like, I think top three record of all time, Kelly Megbe. That, that really gave me like a lot of, a lot more confidence, you know? And I'm, I knew that, yeah, I'm ready. I can, I can do this now. Then made something different, made all of the songs on um, Afropop volume one, you know? So being nominated on the category as these names that you mentioned, it wasn't, it wasn't a surprise, you know? Because I knew it was going to come at some point. But I'm grateful for, you know, not backing down and then just focusing on the on the goal. Um, all my, I like in my albums to be um, a level in an adventure game. You know, 2016 was level one. 2018 was level two. 2020 was level three. And, you know, as you play, if you play an like adventure game, you know, with each level, it gets more interesting, it gets harder, it gets crazier. And that's what it is. So 2020, I knew that I needed a new attitude, I needed a new persona. And all these things, it's not, it's not even that I just, I think of them, I just become that person, I just grow. I became a lot finer, of course. Showed that, showed that broad, everything, they, you know. I grew, I grew up my hair, you know, and I became a lot more confident in my looks, you know. Started wearing whatever I wanted to wear. And it was just right for AG Baby. And then I, I of course, I imposed it on you. AG Baby is your baby, whether you like it or not. Or your daddy, whichever one you want, you know. Um, and yeah, AG Baby is such a, I mean, I think it still sticks. <laughs> it's a beautiful era as well. That was um, a beautiful era. You know, all the songs, 10 songs, 10 straight bangers. Uh, I, I have to give myself like credit for that album. It's crazy. Um, something different, the hits on that album, Endless. Something different, okay, okay, by the way. Yeah, that's that's a song that keeps giving, you know. And to think I gave the song out, I gave it out to somebody before, because I didn't think it was anything. I thought I could make another one easily. But then my manager fought me, and I, I took the song back, and it was the most streamed, it's still, it's still the most streamed song from that album. My most synced song. It's, it's crazy. 2020 really changed my life. Catch me if you can. Absolute beauty, you know? You know, I realized, so and this is level four of the adventure game now. I realized, okay, I've come off, you know, I've, I'm, I've grown into myself now, you know, realized who I am. And then I became Bad Boy Dex. Tools, Tools gave me that name, by the way. Tools gave me that name, said Bad Boy Dex. And I'm like, yeah, I like, I like, I like the sound of that, so. Started calling myself Bad Boy Dicks and I made songs like It Is What It Is, Sina, um, Hi, Crazy Album. That's another beautiful album that I feel like people slept on at first, but they realized that it was a gem. Um, that one was um, something I, I kept like for a long time, you know, but I just thought it was time to just share. I was sure that it, was, it would give um, hope to people that are going through it, you know. I feel like more awareness needs to be done about sickle cell disease, you know, and um, I was vulnerable on Five Star when I talked about uh, sickle cell showed me crisis, but thank you for the journey. All my life, I'd never, 
I've never let anything stop me. Not even the sickness. When I was young, I remember one of the things I shouldn't do was be out in the rain, you know, but that's what I wanted to do as a kid. When I see my fellow kids, like um, pairs play, playing football, I wanted to play football as well in the rain. Like, I knew that I was going to fall sick, but I would do it anyways, you know, I was a rebel like that. My mom warned me, you know, but when it happens eventually, then I'll start crying. I was very sickly, at least every year, I fell sick, like I had like crazy crisis. It stopped when I turned 20. Until then, I've not had a major crisis. I don't, I don't know what happened, I couldn't tell you, but I know it's God. And to see everything that I've achieved, you know, the work rate, my work rate, it passed Kante on. <laughs> with somebody that, that, that lives with sickle cell, yeah, you wouldn't think that it was possible. Just wanted to um, give people strength to know that, you know, it's crazy, crazy disease. Um, but you can you can be above it. You can live your life knowing that it's just it's just there, but you you can be more, you know. And I'm happy that when I'm happy because when I released the song, I got a lot of um, saw a lot of emails, comments, people talking about how they would never they, like nobody would ever think that I had sickle cell going on. But I'm grateful that um, it gives people strength. I still see people talk about it and. Yeah, I just wanted to get that out. Damn no, tequila man. <laughs> I found tequila. I used to be a brown guy, drank cognac for a long time. I've stopped taking all this now. Now I um, discovered tequila for the first time last year, um, April in the studio in LA. It lifted my mood, I felt good. And I knew because I'm a very spontaneous guy, I knew there and there like, this is a new energy, this is some new vibe. Started calling myself Tio. Tio in Spanish means uncle, um, mister or guy. You know. Tio tequila. Then that one experience of taking that one shot of tequila, and I gave an idea to give the um, tequila ever after idea. You know, I wanted people to feel the way I felt when I had that one shot of tequila. It's crazy how until things get recognition, people don't even know when something starts, right? I started this thing since, um, if you listen to Hair For Hair, it has EDM. I've been about this life. Everything that I'm doing now, it's not, I, I didn't just start, it's been, it's been there. If you listen to um, Hair For Hair, it had EDM. I've been about EDM. Then I did a remix of Sina with Banks and Ranks that many people don't know. But yeah, that's EDM as well. So I didn't just start today. I've always loved it, you know? And um, a huge shout to Michael for for hooking the high EDM up, and then we did it. We performed it at this festival, and it's literally like catching fire everywhere we go. There's more. That's a divine, like plan. That's God's plan because Tunji, who's the CEO now, I met him since 2018. He was one of the people I played my about 34. He like he wanted to sign me so bad, but of course it was just an an hour. An hour. He couldn't do so much. Sent me to the CEO of Sony. They listened. It didn't happen. And we just stayed friends, you know. Just once in a while, check on each other. And apparently, he said to himself, he said, when he gets his gig as the CEO, I'll be his first artist. I didn't know that. Then when he got the gig, he reached out. I'm like, oh, okay. Let's go. And Def Jam, of course, um, great company, great record label that breaks like um niche artists like me you seen the track record you see um kanye rihanna um justin bieber just to mention a few people yeah it's been smooth partnership and i'm i'm grateful to have people that care people that care about the culture people that care about me about the music so signing with def jam is um it's a huge blessing for me my name is adekunle gold call me tio tequila ag baby or your daddy anyone that works for you and this were the top moments of my career so far.